Welcome back guys, today I'm going to show you five things that you should be doing with your Pokelink streams. Some of these are fairly simple, some of them are just things that people really don't know exist. So without further ado, let's jump into it and show you some cool stuff. By the way, I stream every Monday, Wednesday and Friday on twitch.tv forward slash Jezebel. You can see the link in the description down below. Now the first one is manual sessions. Now this allows you to go through the app manually if you're running a console or you're running a game that we don't currently support. That means you can manually input as much or as little data as you want, as you would get from the games. But you can do that manually or if you check out point five, have somebody else do that for you. Yes, that's possible, but let's go to the next one. Number two is themes. So themes allow you to completely customize the way your stream looks. We give you the tools you need to build your own themes. It does require a bit of coding knowledge, but you can also commission somebody to do that for you. Now these are as unrestricted and free as you want to make them. If you look at some of the themes now, you can see that some of them are vertical, some of them are horizontal, some of them have HP, some of them don't, some of them have XP. You can customize these however you like. You can even animate when a status effect happens, like when it's asleep or it's poisoned. Or like my personal one, for example, when it flashes, when it takes damage. Now, onto automatic root tracking. So, as you go through the game, every Pokemon that you catch is attached to a root. So, it is given a tag of location met. And that means that every Pokemon that you've caught has a root number attached to it. Which the app can then associate with a specific root name. And then we show you that in the app. Now, if you're doing a manual session, you can automatically tag this yourself when you're uh, doing a route. This also comes in very handy for soul links, which we'll get to in another video. Now, for this one, we're going to go to session resuming. It's a very small feature, but it saves you a lot of setup time and also just a lot of faffing around. It's kind of a saving grace for me. What this allows you to do is once you've set up a session once, you'd have to boot your emulator up ever again. All you have to do is open PokerLink click on resume session and voila it'll boot your emulator your rom and it will generate a config file as per the session that you previously set up now this will save you a lot of time and also it means you haven't got to faff around with anything it remembers where the emulator is where the rom is will automatically load the rom into the emulator for you and thus we can be lazy or as i like to call it more efficient now for the final one, this is for multiplayer sessions. Now we've all seen people do versus cage lock soul links on videos before, but very few people until Pokemon came around could do side by side live animated professional post-production grade live streaming soul links or versus or things of this nature. To do this, you go into the app go through the first few steps as you would normally do it in creating a session. But once you've done that, one of you will host a server, which is just done as you would normally do it in a session. And then the others, you can have more than one person in this. The other people will click the toggle on the top left hand side of the app. And it says, I do not want to be a client. That's what it should change to you once you click this. Once you've done that, you type in the IP address of that person and Voila. Then all you have to do is change the IP address uh, in the sources, which the web sources tab does for you automatically. That being said, guys, thank you very much for watching. I love your faces and I'll see you tomorrow.